it's Elizabeth from Fern Creek Stickers and I am doing another Adobe Illustrator tutorial today. And in this video, I'm going to talk all about working with patterns in Illustrator. This is one thing where I do think that Silhouette Studio has a bit of an advantage over Illustrator. I think working with patterns in Silhouette Studio is a lot easier in a lot of ways, but it's something that overall the benefits of Adobe Illustrator outweigh this advantage in Silhouette Studio. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to put patterns into Adobe Illustrator. And so this is assuming that you have seamless patterns that are in a JPEG or PNG format that are essentially an image of a repeating tile. Occasionally though, commercial artwork will give you patterns as Illustrator swatches, in which case you don't need to go through these steps. But most artwork, most seamless pattern artwork that you buy is going to be image tiles like this. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Place, and you're going to find your artwork. So you find your artwork and select any patterns that you want to import. And then you're going to, your mouse is going to show this. So I have 12 patterns that I selected and I'm just going to click until they all are brought in here. And they're all just on top of each other right now. The first thing that I'm going to do before I actually put these patterns in is I am going to figure out what colors I want to use from these. So I will start by, I like to use circles. Um, so I'm going to make some circles here that I can use to figure out what my color palette is. Okay, so then I will use the, the eyedropper tool to grab some colors out of this artwork. This is gonna be more straightforward probably, but I do, this is sometimes though with the artwork, you really have to play around with what colors you want and I'll end up grabbing a lot of colors out and then playing around with what the best color palette is but this artwork doesn't have too many colors and it's also the artwork has solid colors in it so like if it's more of like a watercolory kind of design where there's more nuanced shades that could be a little trickier so i think i've pulled out the main colors here oh there might be one more let me see Let's see if this is a different pink yeah that's a slightly different pink so I can kind of look at all of the different colors here and what I think is going to work best. This pink is going to be too light. So I think that I would go with these four colors for this kit. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go to the window swatches panel. And first of all, there's all these default swatches. This is, this is actually something you can change what shows up as the default. Oops. But we don't want these extra ones that are in here. So you're going to come up to the menu here and say select all unused and just hit the trash can. And that'll get rid of everything except for the black and the white, which I like to have there anyway. Then what you're going to do is all you're going to do is you're going to click on your pattern. Oh, one thing I should say too is when I did the place for these, I had the link box unchecked. So these are actually embedded in the file. If you had the link button checked, there'll be an X through this when it's selected and you'll have a button over here that says embed instead and your images need to be embedded before you do this step. So if you're seeing a big X through the middle of your image, make sure that you hit the embed button. So then all you're going to do is click on the image and drag it up to this window and then hit delete. So I just go through and I move all of these images up here and I hit delete. So now I have all of my pattern swatches. Then I also want to add these colors. And so I'm going to click the circle with the color and here I'm going to hit the plus button. One thing to note, you can drop and drag this too, but if you do that, it's gonna treat it as a pattern fill rather than a color fill. And there's reasons why you want it to be actually a color fill instead of a pattern fill. So you're gonna hit the plus button. And here you can like name the swatch, you can make some edits here, but for what I'm doing, that's not really relevant. So I'm just gonna hit okay. So I go through and do each of those. And one thing you can tell, so if I drag this coral color over to, you can see here, that this one has this little um, white triangle at the bottom, and that's what means that it's a color fill rather than being a pattern fill. So there we go, and you can see, you can kind of test this out. I can draw a shape and, um, and I can fill it in here. 
So this is how we know that this has worked and I have these patterns. So what I wanna do now is so that I can open this in another document is I'm gonna to go to um, this little library icon. I go to save swatches and then I'm gonna save this. I'll just call this sample swatches. And then I can close this. You don't need to save it or anything. And now I'm gonna come here. So this is when I'm designing stickers, I am, I'm just using templates. So when I do a reformat, that's a lot of work to come up with the new templates. But once I have the templates in place, all I'm doing is I'm gonna be changing the colors in previous templates. So I'm going to come here to user defined. So yeah, so I've got my swatches window open. And again, if you wanna open it, you can go to window, swatches, and then I come to the library here, user defined and open sample swatches. And you can see my swatches open up. One thing here, you can change the view of this. So you have a few options. I like to use the large thumbnail view. So you can see that makes them a little bit bigger. Then one thing, I actually, this is not the ideal template because this one, this kit has five colors and I picked four colors, but for the purposes of illustration, it's gonna show here. So this isn't directly related to patterns, but one thing I can show you is to change the colors, you just select something in the old color, you go to select, same fill color, and then you can put in the new colors. So you just do that for all of your colors. And again, this isn't perfect because I only have four colors here and there were five in this old kit. So I would have, I have other templates that have four colors that I would have used ideally. And then you can do the same thing for, um, for strokes as well. So I've got lines here, selecting these lines. It's always a bit of a challenge. There you go. So you just go to select same stroke color and then you will change, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember which one I actually was changing, oh, the coral one. Okay, and then you change the stroke color to match. So that's what you do to change the colors. And you can do the same thing with pattern fills actually. So if I go to select same fill color on this pattern and change the pattern to this red one, you can see this change to red. And then also over here, I had a quarter box with the red on it. Um, so you can do that. And then also this, um, this box change. I prefer not to do the patterns that way just because I'm, I'm making a lot of changes. I'm thinking about what specifically I want from the kit. So you could do that to save time, but for me, that's not really worth it because I wanna think about which patterns I'm using and where I'm using them and that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna select what I want to have a pattern fill and I give it a fill. But then the biggest thing is sometimes you might wanna change how this scales or what part of the pattern is showing. And so this is where you go to object transform each. And here, the key is that you wanna have the pa transform patterns checked and transform objects unchecked. If you have transform objects checked, it's gonna be moving or scaling the object. And if you have transform patterns checked, it's moving or scaling the patterns. You also wanna have preview checked down here so that you can see what it's going to look like. So what you do then is all, all you're gonna do is you're gonna, you can scale things and move things from here and it's gonna show you what it's gonna look like. Um, one thing you probably wanna have here is have the horizontal and vertical scale constrained so that you're scaling those at the same level. So if I wanna make this, the pattern bigger, I just make it 200 instead, and now the pattern is bigger. If I wanna make it smaller, I make it 50 and it gets smaller. So you can use that to scale the pattern. Then you can use the move to change where the pattern is. It doesn't matter so much for a pattern like this that's pretty all over, but sometimes for the pattern, I want to get it centered or get a specific part of it showing, so you can use that. The rotate lets you change the angle of it. So there I rotated 180 degrees or 45 degrees, so you can change which direction the pattern is rotated. Once you have it how you want, you just click OK and your pattern is all set. We can do that one more time. Maybe I'll do it with this gingham to show you about like trying to get something lined up. So I wanna make this one a lot bigger. And here, this is one where probably I would want to have it kind of symmetrical. So I would play around with getting it moved a little bit. And it's one where you, the more you do this, the better sense you get for like how much you wanna be moving things at a time. So now it's pretty even there left to right. And I wanna get it adjusted a little bit, top to bottom, make it a little bit more even. So now it's more symmetrical. So you can see that's where you might be using this uh, function to adjust that a little bit more. One other thing that's important to point out about working with patterns is that 
Okay, let me put a pattern fill in here. And right now you can see when I move this around, the pattern stays where it is. And that is what you want. So this, you achieve this by going to settings, general, and you want to have this transform pattern tiles checked. I'm gonna uncheck it to show you what happens. So when it's unchecked, now you can see that as I move the box, the pattern moves around as well. And this is an issue for a few reasons. So the reason you wanna have it checked is because it will make your patterns essentially continuous across your artwork if you have that unchecked. And so, and, and I will say some people design this way on purpose. And so if that's how you design, then, then that's great if that's what you prefer. That's not how I prefer things. So I want these pieces of bottom washi to have the same pattern like they do right now. And, and right now, because I designed this with the transform pattern tiles checked, if I put a new fill in here, it's gonna be the same. But if we start over, so if I, if I was starting, if I was making my template now, you can see how instead of being the same, the pattern is continuous between the two. So you can see that there's a pink heart right here, but there's not that pink heart up there. So again, if I come and put a new pattern in here, again, you're gonna see that it's continuous. Okay, this one's not a great example because it does kind of line up there. It's continuous between the two, but it's not gonna be the same on the different pieces. You want to have that transform pattern tiles checked. And I will say sometimes it unchecks and it, I'm not totally sure what causes it to uncheck because I'll be working. But if you have something, if your patterns are doing something weird, go check that setting and make sure that it is correct and you should be in good shape. So that's how you work with patterns in Adobe Illustrator. It really is not all that complicated, but it's not necessarily straightforward either when you're getting started. So I hope that you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions and if you have any requests for future videos in this series.